Welcome to the cross-border interviews with Christopher Brown. I am your host, Christopher Brown, and it is Pride Month here on the show. And why not bring on some guests throughout the month to talk about Pride, talk about Pride issues, talk about LGBT2, LGBTQ2SIA plus issues. Hopefully I'm not forgetting anyone there. If I am, I do apologize. And uh, why not bring on a guest who's not been on once, not been on twice, but three times now, uh, Miss Maddie McMillan. Maddie, thank you so much for doing this. It's an honor and a pleasure. Howdy, Chris. Thanks so much for having me today. I really appreciate it. And I really appreciate you going through those letters. Those are all important identifiers. And you're always going to miss some, and that's the nature of the world. But spending time to anyway thank you yeah. well, thank no, you for having me no and thank you for reaching out on uh to the show because uh as june is pride month we want to uh talk about issues that are facing the uh lgbtq plus community and the issue that you brought to my attention is one that i didn't really know much about because as someone who is who does uh who is not transgender I would not even assume that this is an issue. And when you brought this to uh, this issue to my attention, which we'll talk about here in a few seconds, um, I was shocked that it's still an issue three years after the change. Um, and that issue is the X marker, hence why the name of this episode is the X marker. For anyone knowing uh, what the X marker is, I'm going to let Maddie explain it best because she would be able to help me understand it a little bit better. Instead of me giving you the convoluted answer, she's going to actually give you the answer that you want to hear. So Maddie, what is the X marker before we get into the issue around the X marker when it comes to the airline industry? Perfect. Yeah. Thanks, Chris, for having me. Uh, in general, for a long time, our government and our systems here in Canada and a lot of places around the world started categorizing and grouping people into two groups, uh, F for female groups and M for males. Uh, three years ago, our government recognized that Canadians have rights to their gender identity and folks like me who don't, uh, don't want to put themselves into a box of F or M and the government three years ago said, and we're gonna change that. So in June, uh, 2019, so three prides ago, our federal government switched Canada over to a three marker system, an F, an M, an X, or if you wanna go non-alphabetical and think radio, X, F, M. There's three, that's how it, it be. <laughs> now, we're gonna have a little bit of a history lesson here because I, I'm, I'm not sure what x means so and is there a name for it because f is female I, I would assume m is male but what does x mean is it just un, un, uh, unknown or uh, not unknown but uh, undisclosed like what does the x mean because i think there's a few people who might be listening to this might going I, I get the x but what does it mean when it comes to relationship to the sex Exactly. And that's a good point. There, there's a difference between sex and gender. So when we're looking at forms in a more traditional sense, sex is uh, what you have for uh, reproductive organs set up, hormonal set up, what your, what your uh, body biologically was set up for. Yes. Now, I'm never going to get that definition exactly right. So please uh, yell at me on Twitter, not at Chris. Uh, <laughs> And that if you do, said, send it to me via email and I'll file it in the appropriate location that I filed every other complaint that I've gotten on the show. Continue, Maddie. So I'll use myself as an example because a lot of people are like me, but a lot of people aren't like me. And I think the way the government overcame it is pretty good. Uh, for those, everyone, when you pop out, the doctor checks you and makes broad assumptions that impact your life, F or M. For me, I was assigned male at birth. That's what the doctor before the fall of the Soviet Union said, and that's what's been clung to all my paperwork since. Uh, that's not who I am. I identify as a transgender, a trans femme non-binary person. So trans femme, so transgender versus cisgender, gender being my identity, not my bits, uh, or my reproductive organs, or my hormone systems, whatever. Uh, my gender is not F, it's not M, it's not it's trans femme non-binary. That's who I am. Whew. Uh, 
the X lets me, as, an, as a Canadian who has a right to express themselves, opt out of being identified as F or M on my documents. And that sort of helps bureaucrats, because realistically, the reason we have it, these categories in these boxes, whether we need it or not to fly on a plane is questionable, but it's to help the bureaucracy interact with the person. And when we think of what's more important, does this bureaucrat need to know what's between my legs or do they need to know how I identify and how I expect my government to, to talk to me and interact with me? So, although, so technically we call it a sex marker, but it's been used more as a gender marker, but we still use sex marker language, male and female versus masculine, feminine, or man, woman, those sorts of binaries that some people want to opt out of, or they, they, I won't say opt out of, they never wanted to be a part of. Being mislabeled for anything is a cruddy experience. Uh, the government gave an option to no longer mislabeling these people, including myself. So when I went to, I, I went to our registries here in Alberta, I followed, I did the paperwork, brought the right paperwork in, and now my identifications and my birth certificate have X, which means that's who I am. My government will no longer assume I am a male or a female. They will know that this is who I am. I am not one of those two. Um, X doesn't necessarily equal transgender. Some folks who identify as non-binary don't identify as transgender and vice versa. So this is sort of the catch-all zoom out. We don't need to know your particulars. We want your particulars to be respected and not to be mislabeled. Okay, so okay. Uh, I X, think I have a better X, understanding, but I still need you to continue on because <laughs> we use gender and sex a lot there. And I, I think there are, some, myself included here in this situation, talk, explain to me like I'm a two-year-old. <laughs> there, okay. I'm gonna Two-year-olds do, tend to get it. Okay, yeah. this is the easiest way. Uh, do I like being called Mr? No. Do I like call, being called Mrs. or Miss? No. I'm okay with, like, I, I won't stop people say Miss, and that's okay. I identify as trans. Well, and, and I, know that's how I the screwed up on the me. first, like, two minutes of the interview because I'm pretty sure I called you Mrs., and I do apologize for that. But you have a chance, you have a chance to talk, and we know each other, and we lean, and that's the way our nature is. The question is, WestJet forces people like me to choose miss missus or master and it isn't necessarily why i choose or why i identify it's hard to codify who a person is using a written language based off of an oral language that's only like 500 years old what i can tell you is what i don't like being called and i can tell you that westjet makes me call myself those things despite the law changing three years ago and that's sort of that's sort of the crux although it's sometimes it's really wondersome of like what what makes a male what makes a female and those are lots of questions but the only question that we have to answer is why does a canadian citizen who's guaranteed rights to identify who they are have to be put into boxes of who they aren't despite those rights and so i'll switch it around if if we switch over you aren't able to call yourself a male anymore you have to choose between the f or the x that would make people upset and that's sort of why the federal government stepped back and said, we're not going to make people wear badges that aren't them. Okay. I have a better <laughs> understanding. No, I do have a better understanding now. And it brings us I've to... Spent, I've spent my whole life thinking about it, so I can appreciate <laughs> Yeah, um, It brings us to the reason why you're here today. And you briefly mentioned it there in your last statement, and that is the airline industry. The airline industry has had three years to catch up to the government. It seems that they had a quick time to catch up to the COVID government, but they weren't able to catch up to this issue on the government. There are uh, Canadians in this country who have X as their sex on their driver's license, on their passport, on government documentation. And I want you to talk to me about what happens when a Canadian like yourself would go to buy a ticket to say on WestJet 
or Air Canada, hypothetically, because I'm not sure you mentioned WestJet. I just want to, I want to let you clarify if Air Canada has this as well. But what would happen if you went to go buy a ticket tomorrow, say to Ottawa, and you would need to identify yourself as X, because that's what the government of Canada identifies you as, would that be allowed? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Very long winded it, question for it's a, bru- no. <laughs> it's a brutal, it's a brutal short answer, but let's say work wanted me to go to Ottawa for Wednesday. Uh, I would have to tell them you're gonna have to lie to buy me tickets. Uh, there is no choice for WestJet to put an X. They only you get to choose Mr., Mrs., or Miss. Things that don't even identify that don't directly match up. So they make a lot of assumptions and a lot of liberties, and it forces people like me to have to, A, talk to my employer about how I can't travel across the country without lying, B, force them into a position of they're screwed either way. Either they don't take me because I can't be, because of who my gender identity is, or they do take me and they lie uh, over borders. So let's say I hop on a let's say I buy a WestJet ticket and I did I'm flying I'm flying WestJet out east this summer I'm going to go to the gate agent and I'm going to say my ticket and my identification don't match and at that point they should probably deny me service because that's what the law says but they're in no position to let me through because their systems block it it's not a priority to them so the uh I'll tell you the Air Canada option versus the WestJet. So we bought WestJet for flying out. Uh, You get to choose Mr., Mrs., Miss, and a couple of other gendered terms, what prefixes. Once you click that, it'll hop over and it'll auto-populate. You put Mr., you're a male, you're a man. There is no choice for anything else. You you have to go to one of those two wrong boxes. Um, with With Air Canada... You get to go male, female, or other. Other works for the legal system, and we'll go into weights and measures in a sec, because that's how WestJet has tried to weasel out of this. Okay. But Air Canada, you go male, female, other, which is, I'm not in a position to lie. However, at the same time, it's male is a recognized sex marker in the country of Canada. All Canadians with a male identifier are allowed to have it recognized on their paper. Same thing for all female marker Canadians. All X marker Canadians are something other. They're not the same group. So it's sort of a secondary tier. There's people who belong, people who belong, and the other people. (laughs) Not as good, but I'll tell you, this is where there's a further breakdown. When people get onto planes, there's logistics. And a lot of folks like me, a lot of folks in the queer community can understand it takes a lot to take down the systems that we live in today. Uh, there's a lot of barriers and a lot of issues. One of those is when you're flying a plane, you have to worry about weight. So if you look at a manifest, there's like a summer weight and a winter weight for every Canadian. It's really interesting. Three years ago, when the federal government tr- switched the markers, Transport Canada added a weight assignment for X markers. So there's a summer weight and a winter weight for males. The first category, summer weight, for and winter weight for females, the second category, and the same for a third category, uh, X marker individuals. But here's the thing they went for safety. There's no way of knowing what the body mass is. I carry a lot of scars of testosterone, but I also carry a lot of, I was able to grow to six feet. I'm probably in the higher category, and Transport Canada aired on safety. They're going to say, okay, this third category, we don't know where it'll be. So we're just going to copy and paste the the weight maxes for male. So it'll be the max number just for safety, err on the side of caution. So Air Canada, you can see that in their login. They have a male option, which transfers over to the ticket and the plane manifest and all of that. Male, male entry, male weight. Female entry, female weight. Other entry, X weight. Yeah. That's what the law says. I wish they'd change the marker, but they let me fly and they treat me like a human being. I love flying Air Canada, especially compared to WestJet, who lied about that situation. They are saying publicly, (laughs) uh, unless unless they are very, I I give leeway for for misunderstanding them because I hope they're an honorable group. 
However, they said uh, to City News last week, after many X marker Canadians asked them, why are you doing this? They said, it's a safety thing. We only have, it's a safety issue. And for safety reasons, we have to assign a gender and we assign all X people male. So as opposed to creating a new category so that it respects the bureaucratic systems and it feeds through for the proper manifest. Instead, WestJet said, ah, screw it. You're, all you X marker people are just men, which doesn't necessarily follow charter rights. And it leads to a lot of questionable situations in airports. I can tell you before I had my marker switched, WestJet folks got confused at me and I had CBSA agents walking me through. <laughs> if, if airport security has to protect you from an airline, there are issues. Uh, and a lot of their frontline people are being abandoned. Anyway, uh, the I issue want, is... I, I yeah, want sorry, to just I, ask a question here. Because there are probably people out there right now listening to this episode, whether it be when it airs. First off, actually, before I ask the question, I'm going to preface this, that this is recorded the first Sunday of uh, June. Early June, early. Prior. This is airing the third uh, uh, Thursday. So when Maddie was talking about last week, um, they're talking about the first week of June. So just to give some context there, so you're not going, well, WestJet didn't say that last week. No, they said it at the time mm -hmm. that we're recording this last week. So that's why. Um, you saved I, me 20 angry tweets. <laughs> I, I, sent, I saved myself at least two emails. Um I want to ask this question because we, we've we talked about the X marker and why it would feel hurtful to lie about who you are because I can imagine someone who has opened themselves up, who has announced that um, the sex that they were assigned at birth is no longer, it, it was was not the correct sex I could imagine that it would be hurtful to try and then have to go back into the, the proverbial closet, would you say, and sort of lie to yourself, lie to the government, lie to the, uh, the uh, airport. At the same time, your documents won't match up. I'm going to play a little bit of devil's advocate here and say, why should the average Canadian care about this issue? a good question and it it boils down the average canadian cares about liberty the average canadian cares about the rule of law and the average canadian cares about the charter of rights and freedoms a lot have opinions of it but they <laughs> care about it it defines who they are our law says that we have a right to be who we are based for many reasons including gender identity um i grew up in a world where on tv I was the people like me were the punchline. People like me, after a reveal, people throw up, or it's okay for people like me to be laughed at or joked or be the brunt of evil or suspicion. Our government saw what was happening and eventually changed ways and changed how the bureaucracy works. Uh, the gates changed from the gate we had a changing of the gates. So it changed. I was from about to say hide. if you start if you start talking about gatekeepers. I'm going to have to just take the sign that's behind me for anyone who's not watching this that says Pierre Polyev and call him up and say, well, let's fix the gatekeepers here. But anyway, I'm not trying to make so I'll, I'll tell him. <laughs> you're, you're right. OK, so though we hear a lot of people talk about freedoms from what we're talking about here today is freedom to freedom to travel within your own country as yourself under the law without uh, without having to lie at any step to get through. So as I was saying, we've had sort of a changing of the gates. So it used to be the hurdles of hiding and keeping yourself hidden. And now there's an option that you can hide those hurdles and you can swap it for the hurdles of changing one's marker and living authentically in all systems or in public spheres that you want to engage in. Uh, people could only operate openly as themselves in private and public and business and bureaucracy. And now they can all over, except for a major linchpin of this country, which is accessing it. Um, the average Canadian certainly cares about whether or not the charter is upheld. I'm sure that they would care about laws being upheld, especially when it's three years 
this isn't just something in COVID. This is this happened in the before time, a lag before COVID, multiple years. And for an organization, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about WestJet here, they're saying it, it's difficult and it's hard to do change. They, they just celebrated launching a new air, air route to Edinburgh, to Toronto. I'm sure that took a lot of infrastructure and a lot of time too. It's a demonstration that WestJet is prioritizing international profit over domestic rights. Uh, they put profit as opposed, they put profit in working on that path instead of three years of deferring the dignity of every X marker person. For me, there, for me, there was three gates to get X on my ID and it took five attempts uh, over for those three. I've done everything the law asks me to, and yet I have to lie to be able to access what I'm entitled to uh, as a Canadian or as anyone in Canada. Um, is so this, is this a, just a WestJet issue? You talked about Air Canada and how they have the quote unquote other category. And, we can talk about it's, that. For... It's, it's systemic. I'll, uh, the issue, the reason I say WestJet versus Air Canada is because, again, the, as opposed to openly addressing it or openly saying, yes, we, we have deferred these people. They said, yes, we are doing this. They didn't say when it'll end. They didn't say if it's going to be their first priority now. They didn't even say sorry. So for someone who has to yield their rights for an undetermined amount of time, that is worrisome. And it isn't just, and that's the half of it. The other half is WestJet is openly denying Transport Canada safety bulletins and safety advisories for the past three years because they've cited that safety reasons they have to assign people like me as a man. My doctor did when I popped out back in uh, when we were facing the Soviets, but a lot has changed since then. So, like but six weeks ago? Just make sure. Like six <laughs> Like it seems like the Soviets. That's, I, that's I, I how put a lead, I put... back in corduroy is back in fashion, and so is fascism. Uh, it's amazing that in all that time, a, a company that flies their planes by computers can't do a drop down box. And I don't think it's so much as a can't, but it's a won't. They don't have a priority in even their recent statement of talking to it. Um, that's a big and that's claim. that's sort of the difference between. Well, no, it's not a claim. It's no, it's no, a fact. Because... No, okay, but I'm gonna I'm gonna because I want to get the, this question out there before you continue on, Maddie. I apologize for interrupting, but no, 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 no. That's good. Are you saying uh, West WestJet is transphobic? I uh, I'm saying that, and thousands of X marker Canadians and thousands of non-binary and trans folks and allies are saying that because we're not just saying it; we're living it. I got set up last year by under-supported staff and saved by, by staff at WestJet. What is evident is huge amounts of corporate confusion where different levels are telling people like me inaccuracies. Their answer from the top level person was wrong three years ago. So they're not checking their work. They're not investing in even looking at why thousands of people across the country are saying, please let us, ha please let us have our rights please stop treating us like garbage. Please stop putting us in boxes that the government says you can't do anymore. And people like me, like, if you look at even Statistics Canada started registering trans and non-binary folks this year, it was really great and it's in the analysis. The numbers are there, we exist, but we don't exist to WestJet. And we don't have normally the economic capacity to go and challenge. Uh, it's tough enough to get to an airport and get through the airline, and they're making it tougher despite knowing about it. But they have the time to make some very nice pride tweets. <laughs> no, they, well, they changed their logo to a rainbow, so that's got to be good. I'm assuming. I'm joking, joking for anyone who's about to come for me. <laughs> Please just don't. Um, I'm unsure if they did because, like, they posted it, but I. I I look at them often these days based off of their poor behavior and their poor demonstration of Canadian values, uh, but they're barely into rainbow washing these days, which is just as worrisome as how they treat us in person. And when I say us, I, I should mean Canadians, because this is an issue, uh, a designation that you have, a different category in that designation. 
I'm assuming that, I'm sorry to assume, but I assume that you're an M marker person. You have all those rights. Imagine if those, if, imagine if a company could stop recognizing all of those. No, and I- And it's sort of, yeah. I completely sorry. understand where you're coming from. I would be furious as well if an airline said, I can't uh, claim my husband as a husband because it just doesn't work for them that you have to be a female and married to a man so i and, and i know it's apples and oranges that i'm comparing there but i completely understand that's very because, similar how go ahead how would you feel if if your husband bought tickets and you had to register you as a female yeah i would be pissed off i would be pissed yeah. off i would be furious i, I get where now now <laughs> at every gate the person is going to bring it up you're going to get more and more mad. And since, yeah, I it, there's a risk pileup with all the gates at security. There's a risk pileup for people like me. And when the corporate person who's supposed to be living up to the rights doesn't, doesn't care, it's up to the frontline employee and how much of how much capacity they have that left, left in the day to go through the BS that their company is setting them up for. So we, we've talked about Air Canada, we've talked about WestJet, we've talked about the part of the ticket part, the X marker uh, on the ticket. I want to talk about CBSA right now, the Canadian Border Security Agency, because before you can even get to the gate, you have to get through security. They have to check your passport, they have to check your ticket. So they have to ensure that everything is correct on the ticket and your passport matches it. Because I just went back to Toronto and they looked at my passport, they looked at my ticket to make sure name matches up with passport name. Is there any, I don't want to say confusion, but is there any um, pushback or negativity that you have when uh, X marker, and I, I, I'm going to use that word, and I do apologize if I'm using it incorrectly, because I don't want to say just transgender yeah, X marker it, people, or X, yeah, exactly. X marker so Canadians, because exactly. that's the legal designation. So for X marker Canadians who go through uh, security, they have a ticket that says they're Mrs. or Mrs. if they're WestJet, and then their passport says X first name, last name. Is there any potential where security could say, we can't let you in because your ticket and your passport don't match up before you even get to the gate? Yes, 100% yes. Has the, it happened? Have you, have, have you heard stories where it actually has happened? I would hope not, but they have the right to technically deny you going through security because your ticket and your passport do not match up, right? Exactly. I'll flip it another way as a thought exercise. X markers have existed in Canada for three years. Uh, WestJet has not updated in three years. WestJet, on average, 700 flights daily. I can't remember if that's domestic or overall. But that's 700 flights a day that this could be happening on, which means someone goes to the they check in with falsified documents, documents that don't match because the ticket doesn't match the ID mm -hmm. and no one stops them. And they go through security and they have their ticket and their ID checked and no one stops them. And they go to the gate and they have their ticket and their ID checked and no one stops them. We have laws, we have three levels, but all these people are put in a place that they have to break the law so that people like me can get through without being harassed. I mentioned before, I'll do a shout out to Sam in Ottawa, if anyone's listening and they know Sam who works at the Ottawa airport, he saved my bacon. I was set up for failure, but his compassion to work the systems, not break the rules, he was able to make it work and make the flight go through. And was um, this a now, Canadian border security agency or was this a airline? Uh, oh, sorry, sorry, no, no, that was uh, domestic. So maybe uh, that's not CBSA, that's... Uh, that's just the domestic security. Cat, cats, Katza. Um, oh, okay, yeah. C A S T C. Sorry, Canadian my apologies. Airport Canadian Transportation. So International Borders and Customs Act comes in. There's a big warning on when you when you do this stuff that if you have an X on your passport, you might not be registered or you might not be accepted elsewhere in the world. Now, to be fair, 
as a transgender person, I'm not accepted elsewhere in the world. Um, the, there's, there's a warning saying sometimes you'll have to prove older identification and that's sort of a realization of those bureaucratic slips of the old and the new. Uh, the issue is, uh, WestJet, in answer to your question, if there's issues of passports, WestJet says no. WestJet says uh, that they recognize X on passports, which is good, except I don't know how you buy a ticket with them, with that X. Um, overseas international, yes, there are barriers in their issues. I, I haven't, to be quite honest, I can't get a flight to Ottawa. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, why would I want to leave the country that says that I have these identity rights, uh, and I do, um, to a, a, a jurisdiction with less uh, authority for me to be my authentic self, I guess. There are, it gets harder overseas because other countries, other bureaucracies, other, other restrictions, and that's sort of why I'll that's sort of why, like, if you're an airline and you want to have a booking reservation system, you're going to buy it from a big country and use someone like Amadeus. They're a huge booking reservation system. They're in France and Spain, and France and Spain don't follow Canadian values and Canadian rights and Canadian laws, and they don't really care. Now, one of their clients, or their clients do, because their clients are in Canada. But the question is, how... Uh, how how many years would you keep using a service provider that is making you break the law? And that's sort of the question mark of like, there's no motivation, like there's no hustle, there's no, no even apology, <laughs> I guess. But you know, yes, you're right. There are huge issues around the world with how we do this, but there is solutions. In the United States, they just adopted using X marker and we see Delta, we see other airlines down south putting hustle in their game because they realize that that administration is going to enforce the law. WestJet isn't enforcing the law here, and they're not trying. So maybe we, we should look at that American model and, and have the government oversight uh, compel the law to be applied. Um, we do. We've been talking for a bit about a half hour now. I want to take a quick break and throw in a commercial break here, but we'll be right back after this quick commercial break. It's going to be like 30 seconds to you. It's going to be like two minutes for us. So we'll be right back after this quick commercial break where we'll be talking with Maddie. And as much as we've been going into some deep stuff here, I'm going to go into some even deeper stuff after the break. So you will not want to miss this. So we'll be right back after this quick commercial break, guys. We pride ourselves on going beyond that 15 second soundbite by becoming a backer of the show. With a quick visit to patreon.com and searching cross-border interviews, you can help continue this show. For as little as $3 a month, your support can ensure we grow and bring new and exciting things to our growing listenership. Click the link in the show notes and back the show today. Welcome back after that great commercial break. Like it said, if you haven't already, head over to our website, hit the click on the support button, find different ways that you can support the show. Any donation counts, dollar, two dollars, three dollars. If you want to donate a thousand dollars to the show, it does help us continue the show and it expands our uh, coverage and expands our ability to bring you some great stories like we're doing with Maddie right now. Um, Maddie, we, we talked for the first or the about half hour of the show, and we got into some pretty heavy issues. I've not prepared, Maddie, for the next line of questionings. And on the show, I've always tried to pride myself on being balanced, being both sides and talking about both sides. Now, I've never liked the gotcha questions, and everyone knows that. But I'm willing to ask questions that may be touchy, but if Maddie doesn't want to answer them, if my guest doesn't want to answer them, they can say no, and we can just move on from that. And I'm not going to press them all. But I'm going to start with this, Maddie. If WestJet is like this, why, why not just fly another airline? Why not just go to Flair? Why not just go to Swoop? Why not go to Air Canada, who was a little bit more progressive on the other? Why put yourself through this? when you can just say we have other options so why why would i even want to give my money to an organization like westjet who demeans a portion of canada 
by not allowing us to identify who we truly are. I have other options. You are true. That is correct. Other people don't. I'm in a position with my X marker and with where I'm at in my world and my employment. I can talk about these issues. Other people can't. Um, that's the way our world is set up. Yes, it would be easier to just all X marker folks stop flying with WestJet. The issue is our country says X marker folks are Canadians or X marker folks belong in Canada. And for a business to operate and take up space, because WestJet does take up space, the, the corridors for flight, the gates at our airports, that is space. Some airports, the WestJet flight is the only option that day. And if we don't make WestJet be accountable in the way they want to be, if we don't give, sorry, it's not about making. If we don't ensure that WestJet has the opportunity to be accountable to the values that they themselves say they hold, giving up, giving up doesn't help anyone. Not WestJet, not Exmarker Canadians, not any Canadian. Giving up when something is against when something is against what's right, giving up when indifference steps over the line of the law. That that ain't good. We can demonstrate. That, yeah, I'm sure WestJet does make money with X marker folks, and maybe they feel, would feel a, lot, a loss in business or not. Statistics Canada says one in 300 people are trans or non binary, whether they have a legal X marker, probably a smaller number. But the matter is, I have a right to walk up to a WestJet ticket counter and buy a ticket. And WestJet doesn't feel like fulfilling that right is any priority. I could give up on it, but that means I give up on half the domestic flight options I have. And I have to pay a premium because someone won't. We, we, we talk about what they could do, how they could fix this. They've had three years, three years of not getting this done. We are talking about this. Like you said, WestJet put out a statement of, uh, a few weeks back, as of airing this, a few weeks back, saying that it's just it takes time, so on and so forth. A lot of issues, security issues. You can yell at the, the sky until you're red in the face, and this could not change. What's the next step? If WestJet doesn't want to change, because you've talked about that you and along with other X marker Canadians have met, are talking about this issue. If WestJet isn't going to change, how do you get them to change with our system being three years old of the X marker and they still have it? So what is the steps that you and your group were going to take to ensure that after Pride, because it seems like if you anyone who has ever celebrated Pride Month knows on July 1st, Pride what? Who? What are you talking about? Oh, we, we, we've moved on to Canada Day. We've moved on to Calgary Stampede. So how do you keep this moment, this issue alive after Pride? And how do you fix it with a system that is so slow to fix any issue? Yeah, there are many options, and uh, amongst uh, the X marker working group, we have discussed. I I'm not at liberty to share publicly all of our options, but but I'll tell you this: it is apparent that some people do not want to talk about this issue, and it is apparent that they are forced to talk about it in Pride Month, and they would be happier when Pride Month not happens. And you're right; issues like this don't get talked about as much outside of Pride Month. Um, when someone doesn't want to talk about something that needs to be talked about, when we, we need to make sure the conversation is heard. So the next step is what we're doing right now. Um, myself uh, and friends from Halifax to Victoria are approaching their local media chains, their local communicators, their local access to community and saying, we are a small group of individuals with this issue. But if we zone out of and make it an everyone issue because it is an everyone issue. The law isn't being applied. Someone's blatantly ignoring access to your own gender identities. 
gender access to charter rights and whether or not you like the charter or not, it's the law and we're here and we follow the law. Uh, and, and that opens to options. Yes, there is a legal path. Uh, yes, there is a public relations path. Yes, there is a government relations path. There's a lot of carrots and there's a lot of sticks. The goal right now is, for me is to communicate the issue. We don't need enemies. I have lots of friends who work at WestJet. I have lots of friends who work at Air Canada. I have lots of friends who work at good old YYC to YYZ. Um, these people all want change. And it's hard to talk about tough issues, but that's what we're gonna do. And it, the issue starts, we're talking about it in June and we're talking about it in Pride Month, but it also belongs in on July 1st. There's a lot of other things heavy to reflect on July 1st, but part of Canada is being, who, being better than what we have been and living up better to who we want to be. July 1st is about liberty. I can't think of anything more liberty. Calgary Stampede is about uh, heritage and being authentic to yourself. If you look at the history roles, a lot of the cowboys around there, whew, uh, they were living their best lives because businesses elsewhere weren't. There's no, I can't start my own airline and I don't want to. I don't want to take over anyone. I want WestJet to be able to hear the conversation from the voice they need to hear it um, and understand it's a conversation that they're welcome to talk at the table, but they have to hear that it's not appropriate for them to be an actor in the, in the world of aviation and not live up to the Canadian values that let them operate. Okay, I'm going to compare apples to oranges. Thanks for my TED talk. Yeah. No, I'm going to compare apples to stones here for about two seconds. And I apologize for anyone who's about to, who's about to hear this question. Send your comments to crossborderphotography at gmail.com and they'll be filed in the appropriate location. I agree with you. I agree with you wholeheartedly that this needs to be fixed. There is a subsection of this population in Canada who is unable to fly already because of their vaccine status. And I already feel the emails being typed as I just said that. We have people being denied boarding because their vaccine status. We have people, we have X marker Canadians who are being denied their true self identification by a, an organ, some organizations in this country, Air Canada, WestJet. There's a lot of industry talk around the airlines right now, the airlines, the airlines, the airlines. This all comes back to the Canadian government though. The Canadian government can say tomorrow, WestJet, fix this, you have six months to do it, or you will be fined for not properly identifying who they are. Just like they have, they could tell WestJet and Air Canada or any air, airlines in Canada saying, we will open up of travel to anyone who's not vaccinated. And I'm saying this as, I, I'm, this is a question that uh, uh, under the guise of a airline specific question. Can the Canadian government, can you not go to the Ministry of Transportation, Justin Trudeau, your liberal MP George Chahal, who's in Calgary right now, or your liberal or your conservative MP in Calgary and say, this is an issue, we need to fix it, WestJet isn't. What is the course that the Canadian government and your elected officials need to do to ensure that this gets fixed and the government mandates that it gets fixed because we can scream at the top of our lungs. It seems like WestJet is a rock and it's not moving anywhere because we've seen that they've passed the buck when it comes to vaccine mandates. Hey, it's the Canadian government's issue. So with that, now that they're saying, no, it's a security issue because the Canadian government, it's a security issue for us. Can the Canadian government just walk in and say, nope, you have to fix it. You have to have an X marker on a booking ticket to ensure that you, the 
Charter of Rights and Freedoms does not be, it is not trampled on during this time. What would be quicker in your work, in your opinion? Getting it fixed through the government or WestJet tomorrow coming out and saying, we've heard you, we're going to change it. But it doesn't sound like they're going to do that. Well, that's, thank you for the questions. Uh, yeah, there's like 12 questions uh, in there. So good luck answering it. A, a good, there are, there are many different outcomes. There will be an outcome. It might not be today. It might not be tomorrow. But one day, planes flying in Canada will follow Canadian law. Uh, I wish to live to see that day. Um, the first group, we have WestJet denying two groups of people. The first group, the, the unvaccinated group. Um, that's a group of people denied access because of their lawful status. They do not meet the lawful status to, to enter that plane, to be on that plane. The I, other group- I is apologize, a group I, just wanna, I just wanna clarify here. Sorry, Maddie, I'm not trying to interrupt. I just wanna make sure that uh, my question comes across the way that I intended it, not the way that it might be perceived. No, no, no. I, I, I'm not saying that it's like uh, the unvaccinated and X mark Canadians are the same batches. I'm saying that the Canadian government has mandated X markers and you must be required to have a vaccination to enter a plane in Canada and you have to be masked. The Canadian government can tomorrow say you don't need a vaccination. The airlines must address the X marker Canadians and allow them to book a ticket through the X marker. The Canadian government at the end of the day could be responsible and they could say, you know what? We're going to fix this. We're going to mandate that WestJet follows through and actually ensures the dignity of our Canadians flying in our country. I just wanted to make sure that I put that on the record because I, I felt like there was a there was a weird there was a weird moment where I sort of spewed off. So I just wanted to clarify that. No, no. Yeah, you were good. I tend to delineate it. OK, we have unvaccinated people being denied access to WestJet flights. Yeah. Um, it's a group of people who are denied access because of the Canadian law. WestJet is upholding Canadian law. And they're saying that we don't want and we want this law changed. But for this group of people, they are following rules. The other group of people, so unvaxxed, they're denied because of their legal status. People like me are denied of our legal status. We can't be legally ourselves on a plane versus there is a route for that other group. That's the difference to that I see. Yeah. Best outcome, I want to give WestJet the benefit of the doubt. As you said, we're there's a lag between recording and publication. And I would love to see by the time this come out, my words are, are proven moot and wrong because WestJet has recognized the situation, has identified their timeline, and if they're going to fire their provider. If someone can't deliver you a the custom code that you're paying them for, maybe it's time to pay someone who can do the job you're saying to do. So, the, sorry, the first is a recognition and hopefully an apology. The second point is get better service pro providers, get a timeline for when you ditch them or when you're hoping things to be done. So we know how long this unjust wait is gonna have to be burdened by these already marginalized people. And there are people way more marginalized than me that carry uh, the X marker from the systems that we have. And the third point is really the most critical in my mind is the redress. I don't want to spend the rest of my life fly flying on WestJet planes only with them biting their tongues because I'm there. I don't want I don't want to have to have a police officer escort me onto a WestJet flight so that I can fly as myself. Again, benefit of the doubt, a redress that lets us not forget this chapter, but realize that it leads to a better chapter. So some sort of redress, re reconciliation, an identification of the harm that was wrong and some sort of action so that when we remember this point in time and we remember WestJet sat on their hands for three, three years and then cited a three-year-old standard as why they're not, why they're okay lumping people into the wrong group. I want there to be, but then something good happened. And that's what I'm hoping for. And if WestJet can't deliver it, you're right. An option would be going to the federal government, the executive branch, so the Trudeau government and 
talking to the Minister of Transport or uh, gender equality would be, would be an area as well, or realistically any ministry, because this uh, impacts everyone. Part of the workforce cannot move as guaranteed by the constitution. Um, yeah. No, I uh, wanna ask the, uh, the initial follow-up before we start wrapping up here, Maddie, and that is, I'm gonna, I'm gonna word this incorrectly, so I might have to do a double take on this if I ask it incorrectly the first time. You, along with thousands of ex-marker Canadians, and I say thousands, probably about tens of twenties of thousands of ex-marker Canadians, are caught between a company that doesn't want to be progressive and a government that has shown its progressive side. We, you not, when you brought this to my attention, I was unaware of this happening. I had heard something that WestJet talked about the X marker, but truthfully, and this is, might be- They do every June. Well, exactly, but this might be me and countless of Canadians from coast to coast to coast who heard it and went, I, I don't know what that means, so I'm just going to tune it out. We talked about how it would affect me if my husband had to identify me as his wife if to book a ticket through WestJet, and it would infuriate me. How do you get Canadians on your side, though? We have become such a polarized community, polarized uh, country where... And I'm, I'm going to say this in the most uh, appropriate way that I possibly can. Some pe some Canadians out there do not believe that transgender people exist. They believe that the X marker means nothing. And that might be a small minority, but they are vocal. So how do you get your voices heard when we are so distrustful of what's on the media. We're so distrustful on what's being said to us anymore. So how do you break through and get the Canadian people to start taking this issue seriously in the sense of it's affecting you, it's not affecting me, so I don't want to put any credence into it, but I will because you're my friend, you're my husband's friend. You came to my wedding. I will stand shoulder to shoulder with you if you ever marched anywhere because I believe that you have the right to and everyone has the right to protest in this country. So how can you be heard in a polarized, uneducated country that we kind of live in? I'm going to answer the first part and the second part. How do we get Canadians on our side? I think they already are on our side. Do every you? Canadian that I, yeah, I, th I think every, every Canadian deep in their heart values the, what makes us our country. And it's a country willing to recognize that we've made mistakes and willing to d take steps to make things better. Yes, there are groups of people who say that we out, we should leave Canada, wherever you are, we should leave Canada. I wish those people would leave Canada because the people who say that the law shouldn't be respected and we shouldn't respect our neighbors and we shouldn't respect their ability to contribute to the economy or workforce or any part or any, any part of any of our great many societies here. If someone isn't gonna recognize the humanity of the person, I'm. I'm not going to waste my time trying to justify myself to someone who can't even say my name. Uh, how do we get people to take it seriously? How do we get Canadians to take it seriously? I think they already are. It's the issue of we have a lot of things to take serious th these days, uh, from climate action to energy security issues to a free market under questions of Russian and, and uh, Chinese influences and undo all of that there's a lot of stuff going on in this world, plus a pandemic, plus the realities of science. Where people are seeing this seriously are the, the three, the four, the five people who stand behind me in line 
just ashamed that I have to be put through this. And they wear sorrow in their face and they see it takes up their time in their day, but they're willing to have that time taken up because I'm the neighbor. Maybe I'm ahead of them in the line because I held because they held the door open for me to get in the line. It doesn't matter. The issue is most people who see this recognize the seriousness of just a general human to a general human, but they also recognize if an airport isn't going to follow the law, who is? Now, there are some people who say I shouldn't be listened to. There, there are some people who say folks like me don't exist. I'm not AI. I think in all the stumbles in my language, you can tell I'm not AI. Uh, what I can tell you is that I do. And what I can tell you is that we're a place, we're one of the few places on earth where I can exist. So for the people who say I don't exist and the people who say the government doesn't exist and the people who say COVID doesn't exist, like, okay, you can go yell at the clouds. I'm busy getting myself into a plane that'll get me through them and get me to where I want to go as opposed to yelling about all the problems in the world. Um, there's people in this world, the people who follow me, who listen to the show actively, who send me hate mail every time there's an episode, which is five days a week sometimes who don't believe I exist and I take up too much space that I should not have the show, but go start your own Keep show. <laughs> taking up space is important. That's very large in a lot of communities, taking up space. And some people feel oh, they're, they're taking my space. Yeah. No, they're taking space on the stage of a greater community. Diversity wins wars. Uh, a Russian army of just artillery gets nowhere. And that's, they learned that right off the bat, the diversity of the Ukrainian peoples and the diversity of their bench strength and their community overcomes groups of people who say there's one way to live. And if you don't live it, you aren't one of us and we will do whatever we want. The world has a choice today and everything serious in this world, whether it's your neighbor uh, on the plane or your neighbor across the globe. Maddie, my very last question to you is this, and it's a very, it, you don't need to write this one down. It's a very open-ended question. We have spent almost an hour talking about this issue. We could probably talk about this issue for a little bit more in depth. And probably if we had eight more ex-marker Canadians on the show, they would all have their stories to tell. What more info, how, how can people learn more about this issue? What would you want the Canadian people who are listening to this, or actually I shouldn't say just Canadians, because we have high Australia, high Germany, high Dublin for some reason, but yay Dublin. We have people around the world listening to this conversation right now. We have people in the States listen to this. We have people across Canada. We have talked about a lot. We have dove deep into a lot of issues. What haven't we talked about? that you want to make sure that th my listeners know about and B, how can they learn more information about this issue? Because there's probably resources out there that you want to point them to. So what else would you like uh, my listeners to know and what more resources are out there for people to learn more about this issue? Whew. Uh Thank you. What a great way to cap a show. I really appreciate all the conversation we had. And I know I said a lot of words that don't get used often on CBC or Fox. Um, that said, I, I think the opportunity of authenticity. Today's story is a story about a group of people who are so, who are so dedicated to being their authentic selves. They'll voice it and they'll negate their ability to fly because they are who they are. The other half of the story is a group who doesn't wanna be honest with the public and doesn't wanna be honest with anyone and doesn't wanna be honest with the law. There's two groups and it's easy to see that one is bigger, but it's all, it's, it gets difficult to see who's right. And we shouldn't be looking at what's right. We should be looking at what are the words we heard? What are we hearing from different parties? And what does that mean to them? And what does it mean to other people? This is what I, when I get uh, intrusive questions, sometimes I encourage people to use Google and it's not to shove them away. It's because Google has, gives you the opportunity to phrase your question how you want and get some answers. There are dangers in going to Google. You can get like, 
Heritage League of Freedom. What are you talking about? Just, uh, <laughs> um, that all said, I'd encourage people to look at two things. Google a term that you heard today, maybe transgender, maybe non-binary. Google add to that Canada or the province you live in and then put Twitter and see what people are talking about. And you're going to see two big camps. One big camp is people getting along with their lives. The other camp is people who spend all their time on their internet yelling at other people for living their lives wrong. Everyone has the choice to what type of world you have. If you're listening to this, you're on the internet now. I encourage yourself to make yourself known. And that is the perfect way to end this conversation. Maddie, I want to thank you so much for doing this. This has been an honor and a pleasure, as always, to have you on the show, to dive into that brain of yours, to deep dive into a topic of discussion. Uh, we love having you on. We can't wait to have you back on for another episode of the Cross Border Interviews with Chris Brown. Um, but thank you so much for this. Well, thank you for having me, Chris. And thank you, listeners, for listening. I know it's long form and there's a lot of different things to take out, but I really appreciate the cross-border audience. Always engaged, always interesting, and always willing to learn and hear other folks out. And that's what we do on the show. We have a conversation. We do not edit. We try not to edit as much as possible. We do edit audio issues and commercial breaks, but we want you to learn. And sometimes I ask stupid questions. Sometimes I ask long-winded questions that kind of go somewhere, but they don't really at the end of the day. But it's my show. Start your own show if you don't like it. Um, Maddie, I want to thank you so much once again uh, for everyone here at the Cross Border Interviews with Chris Brown. I want to wish you all a happy Pride Month. I want to also take a moment and say, have yourself an excellent rest of your day, rest of your week, whenever you're listening to this, rest of your day, uh, month. Um, and get out from behind that social media feed. I know Maddie just said, go to social media and check out what people are saying, but I'm telling you not to, because go have a conversation with somebody because it actually does make our society a little bit better. I hope it does. And it helps our democracy as well. So with that, uh, this has been Chris Brown for the Crossboard Interviews with Chris Brown. Have yourself an excellent day. And remember everyone, just keep talking.